want to keep me uh, top of mind, or how do you how do you want to do this? You can stay here. We are live, so good morning. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Happy everybody. Friday! Happy Friday! Uh, got caught in that countdown, Tom. <laughs> what countdown? Right. Like I don't get to what? see the countdowns. No. Hi. Well, here we are. Hello. Welcome to the IT Hour. It is the first Friday in February. Uh, say that five times fast or ten times, whatever, depending on how much coffee you've had today. We've been chatting about coffee in the chit chat column. So fun talking about The Last of Us on HBO and coffee and getting ready to share some fun stuff. It is a busy agenda today and we're excited to get into that. Um, I was just saying that I've been a terrible host because I don't always introduce us. So hi, I'm Becky Scott. <laughs> I run community at Jump Cloud. We've got Alexa who runs meetups and social and Tom who, um, by the way, if you follow Tom on LinkedIn, you would just see his uh, little announcement. So maybe we should chat about that. Tom, I think hey. you have a new title at Jump Cloud. Would you like I, to talk about I that? I do. I'm now the director of product management for our devices management teams. And so that means I'll be working with all of our platforms, not just our Apple ones. Um, and so the work that's ongoing around Android EMM, the work that is starting on Windows MDM, not to mention our Linux management, Apple management, and you know, all of the management management stuff. So, <laughs> um, you know, there is a lot going on at Jump Cloud these days and I'm thrilled to be where I am. And we're very happy for you. I'm very excited to see what's coming next. Um, it may be a little harder to get Tom on the IT hour, but we'll still try once in a while, see what happens. But uh, we're glad to have you here today. And uh, usual uh, agenda, we're back to that. So we've got community and meetups and product updates. Woo, boy, we got a lot of product updates. Very exciting. And then uh, we have a couple of special guests who are going to talk about advanced identity lifecycle management. And I will introduce them in just a few moments once we get through the usual suspects. So with that, let's talk about community. Uh, since we haven't done this part of the update for a couple of weeks, we've got several. I'll try to get through those fairly quickly so we don't take too much time. So we can get to the main event. So Jacob Lawson on the community did a great script, handy PowerShell script and functions for automation using the Jump Cloud API. And this is for Windows devices. Uh, he had been working on this for a while and came back and posted the script on how he did it. So thank you, Jacob. Uh, Jurgen had some downtime, I guess, when it was really rainy uh, where he is. And he did some fun stuff with Apple shortcuts and Jump Cloud. So that is a pretty hefty script. So go check that out. And Ken from Jump Cloud did a policy report script. We have a lot of scripts. They're awesome. Go check them out. Um, we had a couple of jobs posted in Slack. So I put up a quick post in the careers forum, um, pure property management and facing, facing history and ourselves. They are both hiring. Go check that out. And if you know anyone who is looking, send that their way. Uh, Dario Vernelli has a question about M365 users fields. So if you are familiar with those, go see if you can help out with that. And JLGTX had a question about LDAP mapping between Jump Cloud and Open Directory. If you are an expert in that area, go help them out. And Chris Tate, who is part of our MSP team, had a really interesting um, topic on ransomware. He's talking about that in the MSP discussion forum. So if you want to talk about that a little bit, there's been a, you know, that's, that's always an ongoing topic. Uh, in fact, I know some people locally who are going to be doing some ransomware simulations coming up uh, next month. And I think that's going to be interesting because they're going to run through what that looks like and how you should respond to it. And so uh, interesting topic right now. So go check that out as well. All of those links will be in the community recap that Alexa so graciously puts up for us in the uh, IT Hour forum. So that is all for now for community. So Alexa, it is your turn for meetups. All right. Thank you. Yeah. So um, we wrapped up our January meetups last week and uh, we had a lot of fun in our virtual meetups. So um, saw a lot of new faces, which was awesome. 
Um, and we've had some really good discussions. We want to shout out David Worthington, who was able to join um, and, and facilitate the conversation around password management. I think that went really well, super timely, um, and opened up a lot of other good discussions. So um, I think that's a good format for us. And you know, being virtual, of course, we, we love being in person, but we did talk about incorporating more virtual into the plan this year, because I think it's just you know, it's easier for people. We're all super busy. So um, that's something that I'm thinking about doing for the rest of the year to, to try to incorporate. Um, but yeah, looking at this month, uh, we have Tel Aviv coming up quickly. So if you're joining us from Tel Aviv, make sure, or if you'll just actually be in Israel for um, our crowd event, um, that's kind of what we're putting it around. Uh, that is February 13th. So yeah, save that date if you'll be in that area. Um, it's going to be a lot of fun. Our executives will be in town and they've rounded up a lot of um, amazing CEOs from leading startups in Israel and they're going to do a fireside chat. It's going to be super cool. So we're excited about that one. Um, and then we will have our usual suspects. We're going to have Chicago, D.C., Denver and Raleigh all the week of February 20th. So those events aren't launched on the platform yet, but they will um, be shortly. So look out for those. And yeah, next week I will have um, those dates and locations confirmed. So I'll be able to share those details. Very cool. Exciting. Uh, and speaking of our executives, if you missed last week, we had Raj on. So go check that out. If you missed it, you can look at it here on Crowdcast. You can go back one week or you can go to our YouTube channel, check out our IT Hour playlist and rewatch it there. So with that, product releases, Tom, there's been a lot yeah. going on and well, a lot to come. A lot going on and a lot to come. And I want to talk about a couple of things and I'm going to share my screen on the fly. We're going to demo some stuff live. <sighs> So, okay, um, I'm making a I sacrifice always, to the demo gods. It, okay. Please do. Okay. Um, it's always better when you make a sacrifice to the demo gods because it's, you know, that's always dangerous. So I want to show a new command here. Um, this new command is a variant on our existing install CrowdStrike command. And it's got a new kind of launch event because we wanted to, you know, support a different kind of launch event here at JumpPod. You'll notice that there are now two brand new triggers that are available for launch events. Run on every login and run just on the next one. Um, and that means that the next time your user uh, restarts their computer or, you know, logs out and logs back in again, uh, that command will trigger. And so this is a great way to kind of keep an eye on your fleet, maybe keep it in a good working order. So I'm going to update this command right here and, you know, say, hey, great, I got a bunch of stuff that's going on here, but I want to write an if check here. So in this case... I want to check for the CrowdStrike Falcon agent and then use that as my execution trigger that, that's here. So essentially, if you want to, um, you know, set this up for your own environment, you can essentially check for the Falcon app. If there's a directory, at, you know, a slash application slash Falcon dot app, then uh, you want to, you know, exit cleanly. So you can say at this point, hey, you know what, I'm ready to go. The, the, I don't need to run the rest of this command. Um, and actually, I'm going to put this at the very, very bottom, you know, else run the rest of this command. So then essentially, you have now built a command that you already had to do the install into making it a check to make sure that it's installed every time you're there or every time the user run, uh, logs into the device. And so commands that will run on every login is a great new way. And now we're going to actually change the name. and you know save those commands out you're going to have a brand new kind of command that will essentially you know handle this process for you so that you've got a good solid if then block um, and you know you can actually run these things on a, on a regular basis because it's really important that you have software there and you check for it periodically commands can do this for you now which is really really exciting we're thrilled to announce this this is available in product as of this morning so this is the work of one of our internal teams. Uh, they've been really crushing it lately. They brought you the enrollment triggers uh, last month. Now they've got you know the rest of those kind of triggers. Um, the I'm going to stop sharing my screen here. Give me one second. Let's see. I think I know how to do that again. Cool. Thank you, Becky. <laughs> 
Um, the other thing that we can do here at Jump Cloud is, you know, uh, we've got a new app out in the App Store. Um, and, you know, I want to share that for you here. Um, and I'm pulling up a new window to share. And share my screen and share a window, share a movie recording. Here is the, uh, you know, the Jump Cloud admin app. And I'm going to do a quick face ID here. And you can see that I've got, you know, a full list of my users that are available here. And I can go in and look at my user and I can say, oh, you know what? I need to force Alex to, uh, you know, change his password. So I can force a change because he called me on the phone and he said, hey, I'm really sorry, but, you know, I, I've got a, a situation where, you know, uh, the, the password needed to get changed. Great. I can know that, you know, Alex pa Alex's password has now been expired. I can, you know, resend an activation email here as well. Or I can even go ahead and suspend Alex's account because I want to block all access to all of the things that are here. You now have the ability to do this at the touch of a button. Um, it's fantastic. You can even, at this point, reset their MFA. So that, you know, hey, so-and-so changed their phone out. They, you know, they, they need to have their reset option here. Um, this is fantastic. Um, you know, uh, you've got the option to do a lot more things here. This is, you know, something that we understand is going to need to develop with time. Um, and, you know, we'll have a lot more options for you here as you go through, uh, you know, the year. You can see here yeah, at, a touch, at a glance how many accounts you have locked out. You can even go in and take a look at which users are locked out in that case. Um, so there's a lot of great stuff that's coming there. Um, and we'll be, you know, talking more about it as time goes by. Um, so for now, this is meant for your admins. Um, and, you know, we'll be excited to show off more features as we go through time. Um, I'm trying to remember, do we have other product updates that are, were in your list there, Becky, or were those the two? Yeah, um, just minor ones. Um, remote Assist, Clipboard Sync, and... Oh, yes, I could. I, how could I forget? You can now use your clipboard on from your admin device and copy it to the remote side. This seems like one of those things that, you know, everybody's got. Now Jump Cloud has it, too. We're really thrilled that you'll be able to kind of do those shared secreting across uh, the Remote Assist connection. And then there were some more um, report improvements um, that Derek had posted about, which we can drop the link there. Um, and Luke is saying admin app would be amazing if we could have better scoping for help desk users. I hear you, Luke. Um, if you haven't put in a feature request, please do that because that would help. So we can prioritize that. And then Rob says, semi-related question. Are there any plans to add an option to run a command as the logged in user? This is back to your commands. Mm -hmm. Say for connecting network shares on login instead of using the old scripts. Um, obviously, that's always something that we're talking about here at Jump Cloud. Please drop me a feature request. Best way to uh, let us know what you're thinking. And the more people that do that, then the more we know that that is something that people really want. Because if we get only two requests for that, that's gonna be different than if we get 50 or 100. So, and no, I don't mean Rob to like stuff it with 100 from you. I mean, 100 different people <laughs> giving the feature request. Oh, where does one submit a feature request? Um, yes, admin console under support. Uh, if you don't know where to find that, Kelly, we can uh, give you give you instructions on that. All right. There's a great opportunity there. There's a button that says, let us know your ideas. And it lets you submit an idea. It lets you tell, it how, tell us how important it is to you, um, as well as provide, you know, hey, any kind of supporting documentation that you've got um, in terms of how you want to function, how you want the product to function. We're here for you. Awesome. Yep. Kelly already knows. Would love to see a place where all feature requests are listed and are voted on. Yes, Michael. Um, we actually brought that up last week when we had Raj on about um, potentially listing out some of the ones that we're considering and having people vote on them. Uh, somewhere down the road, ideally, I would like to have a space on the community for submitting and voting on ideas, but that is further down the road when we can figure out a way to incorporate that into our current system because there, there's a lot of work that needs to 
make that happen to not create too much extra work for our our product managers. Um, I would like to do that, but I don't want to create more work than work for them. Uh, I want to make things easier on them because I don't want them to hate me. I want to be their friend. <laughs> I want to work with them, not against them. So we're we're working out those details. But I think the first step would be to at least present some things that we're considering and then have people vote on them and, uh, you know, say, yeah, we really want these things first. So that's what we're, yeah, productboard.com. That's that's something um, to consider. We have something built into the community that will allow people to vote. So we've just got to connect all the all the systems to make things work together the way we want them to. So. And I will yeah. say that all of your feature requests that come in, get read. They go to, you know, Slack channels, people's email addresses, you know, those are things that, you know, are being reviewed by the, you know, product development community here at Jump Cloud constantly. Um, so, you know, in the meantime, you know, feel free, you know, one of the other things that, you know, I think the Mac admins community certainly does very well. There's a channel marked feedback in the Mac admin Slack where you can see people's feedback that they send to Apple. I don't mind getting duplicate requests um, because they all just get assigned to, to the development effort um, that we have those tied into. And, you know, that allows us, I think uh, this is a pretty good pivot to our guests today, Becky, in yeah. terms of like, one of the big feature requests that we've heard from the Jump Cloud community, maybe the number one, uh, you know, feature request across the the company, is something that we're going to be talking about today. Yes. So Sam and Lindsay, come on down, fire up your cameras, um, and here we go. We are going to talk about advanced identity lifecycle management. And Lindsay's going to kick us off, and then Sam is going to present and do uh, a bit of a demo. So why don't you all introduce yourselves and then get started? And I'm going to toggle my camera and go off screen here, but I will let you take over. Thank you very much. Uh, so I'm Lindsay. Um, just to give you a little bit of background, I'm one of I'm an old school. I'm an OG Jump Cloudian. I think I've been here. I looked at LinkedIn the other day, almost seven years. I'm like six and in lots of months. Uh, long time I've seen this product and this company grow, have a lot of passion for what we're doing. And, um, and today I'm here with my right hand, <laughs> Sam Morgan. Um, I lead the directory space within Jump Cloud, the user directory very specifically. And um, I'm going to hand the mic to Sam to give herself an intro. Hi, all. I am not an OG. <laughs> I've been with the company for uh, about two and a half years, and I have um, had the privilege of being partnered with Lindsay that whole time. And I also wanted to say thank you to Becky and Alexa for letting us come in today and be with you all. Excited to be here. And my focus um, has varied, but it, it has always been related to provisioning identities to and from gem cloud through an integration so the which integrations varies but but the what i do has not so so that's what i'm here to show you and talk about in my part today so back to you Lindsay. so i'm gonna try this uh, screen share thing see if i get it right <laughs> here we go uh, advanced identity life cycle. So um, we'll start with directory. Uh, you know, I have a bias here. I, I work on the directory uh, with a team of PMs. Uh, our user directory kind of sits central to everything that Gem Cloud does. And uh, it, you can parallel that to m most ecosystems, IT ecosystems the user's identity is is really central to a lot of what happens within an IT org. Uh, a lot of the management um, decision making is centered around who is that user. And if we think of how uh, identities are, are transitioning, um, the modern identity is digital. It's very transient, right? People come and go from organizations very frequently uh, and and they change and grow within those organizations. So they're changing their role or their department or 
Um, maybe they're they're kind of coming and going temporarily. There's a lot of transitions within um, relative to a specific identity, and then there are a ton of downstream stream implications of that identity evolving. So if we start with a strong identity, a well-informed identity, um, we can do a lot more with it. So how do we start with a strong identity? Well, you can build that identity in Jump Cloud, absolutely. Um, as you know, we, we have lots of integrations with directories that sit upstream of Jump Cloud and can feed user identities into Jump Cloud either real time or via a poll. We've been working quite a lot on HRIS as well, and that's part of what Sam's going to talk about today with you. So we pull in the strong identity, and once we have that strong identity, and, and we can do that using various protocols, right? So we have Skim, we have REST APIs, um, those and APIs that people can, can code against. Um, and once we have that unified identity within Jump Cloud, we are able to extend it to all the places, right? And sometimes that's right back to another directory. Um, and sometimes it's to devices. It could be applications, infrastructure, networks, right? So that is that is the, the core job of our directory, our open directory, is to be able to take a single identity and, and make it easy to translate um, and, and keep accurate and strong along the way so that you don't have disparate representations of this identity or you know some of them that are outdated um, but you you have this one identity that is is strong centralized and um, extensible so with that strong identity this extensible identity there's the question of, okay, we can send it to all the places, but one of the big problems that you all face as IT admins is, okay, but but what should this user have access to? Uh, and that is something that, again, transient identity, sometimes what a user should have access to changes um, pretty frequently. It if you look at how often that happens within an organization and and I've heard so many stories about <laughs> the ways that admins sometimes find out that something has changed and they need to go make changes. But if you think of the user life cycle, um, what you see here is just representation of like, it's a constant thing. We are constantly needing to evaluate, is this user still in this department with this title and every time something changes we're going to have to make authorization decisions based off of that um, that might mean removing them from a device it might mean removing them from this group and adding them to another group um, and when we make those changes that has an impact on where that identity is provisioned to it has an impact on how that identity is represented in those associated resources and and what that user can access how they can access it so it's it's a constant flow and with that we've we've done some work uh sam has led the charge on how do we keep that identity in jump cloud accurate strong centrally managed and so i'm going to see if i stop sharing if that works and That's hand it over to Sam. Great. Thanks, Lindsay. So I um, am being bold and brave like Tom, and I am going to do my demo live. <laughs> and I'm covering a lot of areas, so we'll see how this goes. Wish me luck. You got this, right? <laughs> oh, go, go, Sam. You got it. More demo gods. Yeah, more demo. Let's see. I got to make sure I am share the window. There we go. Yay, that worked. So first, I just wanted, since I was live, <laughs> we talked about where to find the feature request. So here, mm -hmm. top nav, you go to support and submit an idea. So that's where you can go. And then you can also see all the ones that you have supported, that you have submitted from right there. So there you go. 
uh, live showing of where to go. So, so as Lindsay talked about, we we built out a lot of integrations and added the capability to import. So, you know, from our Google, you can do an import from M365. We've built out a bunch of HR integrations. Some of them push to us. Some of them we you know like Personio, namely we pull. Um, but the part that we we have spent a lot of time focusing on, and I with the engineering team um, have focused on creating a way to integrate with a variety, a wide variety of s systems, whether it be HR compensation or any other application that you have that is the source of truth for your user data, for your user I identity or the information that creates your user identity. And that's what we call a custom API integration. And so for the purposes of today's demo, what I did was I used um, that capability to build out an integration with a smaller HR player. So the whole point of this is to be able to integrate with um, as many a HR or any other uh, applications that are your identity source. Um, and what you do with that custom API is you basically tell us how to interact with it. So you tell us what kind of authentication it has, you give us the endpoints for getting that worker employee data. You tell us you know, how to read the responses that we get in terms of pagination. Um, then you tell us how to read the, the, the attributes that we get back or the properties that we get back. Where would we find the unique ID? Where would we find the user status if we wanna manage um, user state within GemCloud based on what the status is of that um, particular employee. And then you can tell us for the fields that come back, where should we map those to Jump Cloud? So it gives you a lot of flexibility to control um, the integration. And as long as it's a custom API, right now we support offset and base pagination. Um, so that can be, and we have some scripting around page based pag pagination that we can provide. But basically, that trying to give you as, as many tools and options to integrate what, with whichever application um, is your source of truth. And, and in particular, if we don't have an integration already built between us and that particular application. So before I actually get to the point that I'm gonna show you, which is the new capability to import, not just new users, which is what we supported before, but also updates to users. I just wanted to kind of show you, touch on some of the things that Lindsay was talking about in terms of dynamic authorization before I get back here. So I have turned on the feature for myself. So I am using automated groups. So under um, various groups I have set up. So for my DevOps groups, I, I want any employee with the title of site reliability um, and the department of DevOps to automatically be put in here. And I have turned on the automation piece. If I was not comfortable having the system do it, I could do the suggestions, which is the capability we released some time ago. But the new and exciting functionality that we're in beta with is this full automation. And I've done that for um, a number of my groups, the engineering groups, the sales group, the iOS dev group. And um, so with that, I also just show you my list of demo. Um, So these are the employees that I have pulled on a previous import from my HR solution, Breathe HR. Um, and I'm gonna um, point out one in particular, Agia. So Agia, if you look at um, that person, that employee's information, started off as an iOS developer in the engineering department and you know through my automated groups. And here is, and, um, these are all the, engineering related applications to which like, it has access. But since my last pool, we've, we're a small organization and people wear multiple hats. So we ended up needing to shift that information. So in HR, we've made a, a number of shifts. Our VP of sales left. Um, we hired on a new iOS developer, Ketin, and um, Agia has actually moved from engineering into sales as a sales engineer. And so big, big leap there. And then we've hired on a new person. So we've had a lot of shifts since the last time I, I did a pool of information. So what I wanna do is sync up Jump Cloud with all the changes that HR has put inside my system. So if I go back to my HR application and I go to the identity management tab and I, uh, before I start, you know, in this case, it, Allow reactivation means if a if a person was put in a status that I had defined as inactive and then we rehired them, or if, if one of the inactive statuses was 
being on leave and they've come back, we can have Jump Cloud move them from a suspended to active state automatically. So that's what this option is. And if I wanted to pare down which which results I got, I could choose the advanced identity feature, but I'm, I'm just gonna leave those as is. And so what we've now added before, you would automatically have gone to a view where, um, this view where you would you know, go select your users that you wanted to see and you would be able to import the new ones. But the functionality we've added both in the UI as well as in the API is the ability to either import new users and updates, import only new users or import updates. So you have the flexibility of what you want to have happen with this. And then if I click continue, what happens is the job gets submitted in the background. And when it's all done, I will get an email that has a link that I can download the results. And the link um, actually now pulls information that we have in Directory Insights. So you can see the full scale of what all happened. And we're capturing both successes and failures for those user creates. And you can see all of that. So if you need to troubleshoot, validate, that is all now available in Directory Insights. So let's go back to my users. And let me go look at my list of so you can see that we Satine has been added along with lists. And I have my settings here to say that when bring in any new user into the staged user state so that I can do their, their onboarding. So that's where you see both of those new users. Oops. And let's take a look at Agia. So Agia should now be a sales engineer in the sales department. And so let's go take a look at Agia's user portal. So if I refresh, this is what it looked like before. And I did nothing, right? You saw everything that I did. <laughs> Voila. Because they are now in engineering, they lost access to all those engineering apps, and now they have only those apps that are appropriate for salespeople. And then the other thing that should have happened, yep, is that Prim, because Prim left, the status changed from an active state to an inactive state. And so we automatically suspended Prim so that as part of the leaving, we removed all the access that Prim had so that we have we have yeah. secured those resources for that person that left. So that that you know, is the power of all the things together. So it all starts with identity, but the identity has to be paired with the, the um, user groups to provide the authorization. And then you need the device to provide the gateway into that. So I will get back to, that concludes my demo. <laughs> the demo gods were kind, so thank you for that. <laughs> and the product worked. <laughs> it's, it's, it's always magical to see. So I, I've shared that I've been here for a while and <laughs> this is something that I wanted to see for years, years. Um, Tom alluded to this. It's been an ask and it, for a very long time. Um, and to see it in action is, is always incredible. Um, all of it, right? The ability to import the updates. And one thing that Sam didn't mention yet, but um, I'm going to share screen again. If I can do all of it. But what about automation, Lindsay? <laughs> <laughs> well, there's a couple of things. So, like, we have the ability now to push a button. And just to clarify, the updates are are in they're live. Uh, right. the, the beta part portion is is the automation of groups. So we have the ability to go click a button and pull in the updates. The next phase of that body of work is to schedule them. So Wanted to give a nod to that. And Sam, if you have anything to add here, we have screenshots of this because this is, is in development. We don't yet have it demoable. Um, but anything you want to add, Sam, to yeah. the scheduling? Where we landed on that, you know, as just our first pass, that this is, you know, we hear that the desire is as near to real time as we can get it. So our first pass is it is just to have it happen every hour and to do it like the full sync, give me all of the creates and updates. And then the other piece was observability. How do I very easily understand what has happened and how do I quickly get to where I need to go? So the other thing we're gonna be doing in, in combination of that is making sure that you have an easy place, a single place to go, which would be the homepage alert widget to let you know in the last 24 hours, seven days, we're still figuring out that, that time period, what happened. 
get a summary of what happened, focusing on your failures, and then you get taken to a view from Directory Insights. Um, if you don't have Directory Insights, then then we'll we'll give you an ICSV with that information. And if you do, then we'll take you to that curate that curated view, and you can go dig in to see what happened and why it happened and what changes need to be made in your source. So super excited to bring this because it really culminates that whole story um, and brings that punctuation on the automation piece of it. So all those little check boxes that you, mm -hmm. you know, go through every time something changes. Yep. Um, we're just trying to, to, to knock them off, cross them off the list for you. Um, so back to the, the authorization, what you saw uh, on the group itself, being able to add a, in an attribute value condition or rule to a user group uh, that can then automate it, that's in beta. Um, and what it does is, again, it brings this update full circle when in combo with some sort of real time or near real time import of users. And managing that group, if you're thinking of all of the things that change every time that uptake, up, update happens on a user. I could be, Sam demoed this beautifully, I could be pro changing the provisioning, provisioning to different sets of apps, deprovisioning from other apps, providing authentication, applying policies and controls. So if you think of what a group manages, it also manages or can manage what conditional access is applied to users. Um, there's, there's a lot essentially that a group can bring efficiencies around if leveraged. It can assign attributes within SSO apps and the list goes on. So, whoa. Um, so groups are powerful and with that power comes great responsibility. Thus the automation, um, automation that is based on your business rules, uh, not only provides you efficiencies, but it also keeps you secure. And so we had, we had the, we have the beta, beta for automated groups live. We've gotten feedback. We've gotten feedback uh, internally, externally, absolutely. And the customers that have, have touched that beta feature started to tell us, hey, there's, there's actually some user experience that is a little rough um, and some of the words you're using to describe things are a little bit confusing so you may have seen like group suggestions what is a group suggestion so does that mean that you have an ai and you're like determining what user should be part of a group and telling me um uh, no it was <laughs> that's not what it was doing so a lot of the words that we were using weren't really helping people understand how how our our new group management controls were actually working, what they were actually doing. So we are iterating and improving the UX. I'm gonna just walk you through a little bit of that. This is not a live demo. Uh, <laughs> I know it's not, not quite as exciting, uh, but what you see is we're, we're changing the location. We're gonna have these membership controls that live within the detail of a group. And you can decide if you want to have a group be static or very consciously opt to have it be dynamic. And so again, some more changes there. Um, you can click and see more information. If you opt to have a dynamic group, you have more options, right? So you can make that fully dynamic where if this rule, if this user matches these conditions, I am going to automatically move them from this group out of this group or into this group etc and then there's also the option to require confirmation of changes before they go live so say you've got a group that has a rule on it that provides a special admin privilege and um, you want to know when you should change that group but you also want to make sure it's the right move before you commit to it that option will exist here as well. Um, so we're going to look at, at the fully automatic here. I've got uh, a rule on this product group that allows me to set my department must equal product. And 
then I can preview what users, what, what will this group look like? And so this can be used, maybe I have an existing group that I want to make dynamic. I can go and view what are the changes. Maybe some users are added and some are removed. It's a brand hey, Lindsay, new. I think we're not seeing what you're talking about here. I think we're still seeing the scheduled user import slide. Is there a chance that you meant to go to the next slide? Oh, man. Uh, I've been moving through a lot of slides. <laughs> Screen share fail. Um, let me go check. ahead. I think stopping the screen share and sending it again, I think would probably be a great thing to send. Okay. Let's try. Yeah. For some reason, it seems like it wasn't updating. So I don't think all of us were seeing it. So all there right. we go. Ah, so there's the moved membership controls. Now tell me, are you seeing it change? Yes. Oh. Fantastic. <laughs> Here we go. So this is the reskinned UI here. Um, and the preview button, here you go. You can preview who's going to be added, removed. We give you some totals and then you can confirm. Um, there's also an option to exempt users from this rule. So, ooh, I gave it away. <laughs> Before I move on, I'd love to ask, you know, are there... If, if there are any questions about what you're seeing or feedback, and I know um, you you don't have your hands on it, this is a, a, not a, even a real demo, but I do want to make sure that, like I said, we're building this now. So if you see anything that didn't make sense, uh, I'd love to hear about it. <laughs> uh, let's see. Will there be an icon to differentiate between static and active groups? Um, that's a good idea. I think, you know, we've talked about making it clear what is the setting on the group aside, but but I can see that working in the, the list view. Um, okay. I'm not seeing any other questions come in around groups right now. So we'll keep going on to the next slide. Which is like, okay, cool. Um, but what about devices? <laughs> yeah, what about devices? Because, you know, I mean, we've just talked a lot about how you can group users by criteria. You can do a lot of those things. Um, you know, devices uh, is a big part of, you know, we have definitely see a huge desire so that you could be able to target a specific policy management policy, for example, to a group of devices that are running a specific version of macOS, for example. Um, you know, what we are really focused here is to build, you know, some fire and forget management tools on, you know, enrollment. And so that essentially when you get a new device to the environment, you know, it, we can make sure that it goes to the right place so that a brand new Windows device can go into a Windows policy and software management and commands group uh, directly based on its operating system values. Um, and so, there, you know, if we look at this particular case, what we've got here is meant for an enrollment cycle adds it to a device group, which in turn grants it policy objects, which in turn grant it software, which can then be turned into like a compliance group over time. So that you can essentially say all of the devices that are in this group that have received this software, that are receiving this policy, are going to be controllable in such a way. Um, we're going to have a lot more to talk about as we go through these processes. The first step of this is dynamic device groups based on key objects associated with that device. Operating system family, operating system version, um, manufacturer and hardware model, um, not to mention, you know, whether or not MFA is enabled, not to mention whether or not, you know, the device is MDM enrolled. And so that there are a lot of great things that we've got coming to device management here. You will notice that I am not doing a live uh, test of this. Um, because we are not yet at the place where we can talk about this. We're going first with dynamic user groups and the work that Lindsay and Sam have put together. And as, uh, uh, with the help of, you know, a myriad group of user experience designers uh, and engineers who are, you know, focused on making this reality. 
So um, Keith is asking for uh, the Holy Grail here, which is obviously, I want to be able to scope uh, based on the user assigned to a device. That's a later development. Um, and has been, you know, if you if you want that kind of functionality, I definitely want to hear about it as a product manager, because that is the secret sauce of Jump Cloud, is making that reality a possibility. So that we get to the state where identity and device can hold hands. Yes. Um, and that as Tom said, like this, this is farther down the road. I, mm -hmm. I just wanted to share some passion and excitement around like yes, the, where these steps take us, um, which is a world where if you think of, say I have HR flow in a user, they're a finance user. So that means I'm gonna put them in this finance group. I'm going to apply certain policies to them to satisfy compliance on that user. I'm going to, again, provision them to the right apps, et cetera. And I have this finance user that has their personal device that they're on. And think about this, a device group that can say, oh, hey, I'm going to put this device that belongs to this finance user in this finance device group based on, based on the user and then make decisions around, hey, maybe I need to put Excel on that device. And maybe I need to, again, have a certain posture on that device that reflects the user. Now, we don't have a timeline on this. Um, so I'm sharing enthusiasm right now, right? And, and yep. vision. Um, but there's a lot of exciting doors that that these, these dynamic groups open for us. So, um, that is that is closure. I know there are a few open questions I can um, roadmap speaking to to the time. We're we are working actively on the dynamic groups right now. I just want to let you know that. Um, so we're we're hoping to have at least users coming within H one. We're trying to make it as tight as possible. We also know this is really powerful, right? Going back to with with power comes. You know, we want to make sure it works um, spot on and that the experience is very clear. So um, with that, I feel like I can maybe answer any, if there are any additional questions. Yeah, there, there were some questions that I marked as questions. So let's okay. go through a few of those. Uh, let's see. Scrolling back. Keith asks, JumpCal uses ADP internally, right? It's coming as an HRIS option soon, please. <laughs> Sam, do you want to take yeah. it? I will take it. I will take it. <laughs> so ADP, yeah, it has a long story. Me and, me and ADP go back. Um, we, <laughs> so yes, we were full on gangbusters getting ready to, we started work on the integration. And um, then with a lot of the changes that happened, we, we, we kind of had to pause and, and decide what, what took priority this quarter. So ADP was on the docket to be pushed over the line um, this between this quarter and next quarter with with the restructuring and some of our priority shifts um, we still hear about it a lot and so we know it's still a very valuable and important integration I just don't have a good timeline for when that would happen but we, we hear it a lot so Keith if you haven't already please you know you hear it a lot from product managers feature requests feature requests feature requests please 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 and thank you we're trying to figure out how to negotiate it <laughs> Right. <laughs> Definitely. All right. And uh, Luke says, only being able to use offset for pagination will be limiting a quick check of a few APIs. That doesn't offer skim. They are using page slash, slash cursor pagination. So... Yep. So I can I answered that later in the chat, but for the for the audience that's watching, um, what we we saw that as well um, that more more and more in particular applications that are identity source use page based and cursor based pagination. So that is an enhancement that we have identified that to really make these custom API integrations robust, we we, we need to look at enhancing that. Some exciting, since we're talking roadmap, some things we do have coming is the ability to do provision from Jump Cloud using a custom API integration. And part of that, part of the same thing. So it, we're looking to bundle it in to apply to both import and the upcoming 
explore work along the way. So definitely on the radar. But again, broken record. Future request, please. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. All right. So another one, this one's from Nathan. Can you make the dynamic rules mandatory or enforced? So if a user was accidentally removed, it would then automatically add them back. Yes. So that that is how the rules will function. If it is indicated within the rule, we, we currently have, and this is actually an area where I would love feedback and we're we are performing some, some feedback sessions with uh, admins plug if, if <laughs> I don't know if anybody wants to participate that's here uh, we're sourcing for those sessions right now um, but basically what we have today in beta is an exemption so you can say I don't want the query I don't want the rule to consider these users um, that is that is the current functionality there is a topic of discussion around should we make it more explicit? Should we have explicit include or explicit exclude actually built into the rule? That's one of the things that we want more feedback on. If you prefer option A, which is live or option B. Um, but the idea there is that either the exemption itself or the rule will indicate if any kind of manual change to that user's membership, a user's membership, will be overwritten or respected. Awesome, awesome. Okay, so Keith was volunteering, so I was just sending him oh. a quick uh, note in the chat about emailing us and we'll get it to you so he can awesome. officially volunteer. Uh, speaking of Keith, he had another question. Uh, this was about the exempt user looks great appreciate the exempt user option will that view be permanent so we know how it is scoped i think i understand the question <laughs> that that goes back to that goes back to um part of his other comment which had to do with him wanting to um wanting to be able to do i'm trying to find it it was he was wanting to be able to uh Oh, dynamic device scoping. I want to be able to scope based on user scope to it. That was the additional piece of that. Does okay. that help? Well, so I th the exemption will be permanent, as in we actually add it to the rule itself. So the, the user is either added to the exemption or removed from the exemption. And that is, that is documented within that rule construct. Um, so... I think the answer that you're you're looking for is yes here, as in we've got this documented on the rule. It's not something where if you make a change, there's no there's no paper trail and there's no way to go and edit it actively. It will it will be respected. Um, and I know that you know there are some products out there where it's like if you remove this user from this dynamic group, uh, we're never going to add them back. That's that's not the, the current functionality we have. Um, Okay. And Keith, go ahead and um, comment in the chat if you have any follow-ups or if that didn't quite, if we didn't quite understand that correctly. And then another one from, from Nathan, how will dynamic device groups interact with the default automated device enrollment group? Will that interfere or conflict or just be applied in parallel? Applied in parallel. We will still continue to do what we have always done with uh, the automated device enrollment de dedicated group. Um, new devices that arrive in Jump Cloud through that mechanism will still be assigned to that group. Um, however, it will also interrogate the device on enrollment, um, determine its device characteristics, and then apply the group memberships that fit the rules that are being developed now. So that if you have an all Mac OS devices, it will be applied to a Mac OS device. If that Mac OS device is running Mac OS 13, it would be applied to a device group that had a rule of Mac OS is greater than 13. Um, and so if it also happened to be a, you know, a MacBook Pro, um, you could apply it to a specific model based, you know, username at that point, or you or I'm sorry, device group at that point so that you could have a, a set of laptops uh, in, that were in a specific model configuration. Um, as we get closer to production, we'll have better examples that go with all of these things. And I expect to be back on a future version of the IT Hour demonstrating this live for everybody. You heard that. He said he was coming back. 
So, yeah. Yeah. And he's not afraid of the demo gods. I mean, I'm afraid of them. Don't get me wrong. <laughs> but I know that how that how best they can be appeased. And that is one great engineering. Um, and that's something that we take pride in here at Jump Cloud. Absolutely. Absolutely. And one last one that uh, is is more of a a future request for the ITR, but I wanted to, to call it out. Kelly is asking if we can do some demos of HR software integrations like Bamboo and some of the others, like go through the, the steps of how they work. Like here's how you add someone, here's how you remove them and things like that, because they don't really get to see a lot of HR systems. So getting like a tour through those is helpful. And I think that sounds like that's a, a request for Sam and Lindsay to come back. I mean, that's kind of what it sounds like to me. So what do you think? I'm in. All right. So there you go. We'll have you back on to kind of run through some of those. I think that would be helpful because I think in some of the webinars, it's been more about HR pieces and people want to look more at a demo of the implementation. Like how do you, how do you do this and, and go through and implement it and add and remove people and do the, the actual work piece of it. So um, I think that would be, be really good. Um, May I ask a follow up on that? If you could put it in the chat, like, do you want to see the rough cut of how do you add and remove an employee, but also setting up the integration and how that flows into gem clouds or or just more of the walkthrough of the HR only. Um, <laughs> she she had PM to me and said, um, when you onboard someone in Bamboo HR, for example, here's what it looks like. Here's how to offboard things like that. Because, uh, like especially MSPs, they get asked by clients for recommendations um, on on recommending HR software that integrates well with Jump Cloud, and if they can see some of those in action, it'll help them better recommend like, you know, you should go with, with bamboo or you should go with um, ADP once we get it up and running or, or some of the other ones. So, so basically just, just some of that. So they can see it in action. Like how yeah. easy is it to use or integrate and things like that. Ha, Kelly says, yay, now I don't have to file a future request for more Sam and Lindsay on the IT hour. <laughs> I think, I think Kelly is really excited that Tom is outnumbered uh, four to one. I think that is, I think that's the first time, might be the first time on the IT hour. And, uh, and it's... more like this, please. We have, you know, I mean, if I, if I think about, if I want to talk about Jump Cloud's, you know, commitment to diversity here, you know, as well, is that I think of some of our best product minds. I think of some of our best engineering minds. I'm so thrilled to be working with so many talented uh, technical women in our team. And so, you know, it, the fact that you saw um, it, that I was a last minute ad, um, you know, this would have been an all women jump cloud, uh, I, you know, IT hour. And I think that's awesome. More like this, please. Yeah, absolutely. It was a lot of fun. Yes. Um, Kelly said she wasn't going to say anything, but so <laughs> I, I did for you, Kelly. You. Um, it's definitely a lot of fun when we get to do this. So it doesn't get to happen very much. And we just have a couple minutes left, so I'm not going to do the headlines today, even though they are a lot of fun. There's some interesting things that uh, if they're still relevant next week, I will save them because there, there are a couple of interesting things going on in the, in the news that we will want to come back to like uh, Twitter closing up the APIs and, and some other things. If, if those are still happening next week, then we will talk about them. With that, Alexa, come back on camera. Where are you? You at least have to come back on for the last minute or so. There you are. There we go. See, now, now we've got there the full panel. <laughs> well, with that, thank you everyone for joining us. We had a good crowd, a lot of great questions. Um, Nathan, I see uh, you, you're saying happy to provide feedback input on this stuff to product. I left the email in the chat. So like we told Keith, please email community at jumpcloud.com and let us know that you want to be part of it. And we will send all of those over to Lindsay and Sam so you can be a part of the feedback. Please do that. Um, and with that, have a wonderful weekend. Hopefully your weather will be better than ours is predicted to be here. And uh, we will see you next week. Alexa, what is our topic for next week? I don't have it handy. 
my I knew you were gonna ask me that. My brain just went away. Oh, whoa, oh, oh, oh. Password manager new features. I just found Ooh. it. Sorry, I was a little quicker than you. So I think is that gonna be is that gonna be Himanshu? Is he yes. gonna join us? Yeah. Okay. Yes. So Himanshu has taken over uh, being the PM for password manager and he is very excited uh, to talk about all the new things that are coming up on password manager and there's a lot planned and he's going to try to make that a regular occurrence where he comes to talk to us about all that's going on. So yeah, Rob says next week pet t-shirts. Like I said, Rob, I'm still working on that pipeline, the t-shirt pipeline. It's a uh, it's a doozy, but thank you all for joining us and we will see you next time. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Thanks everyone.